So how you doing? I can't complain. You know, I, I say that a lot because uh, literally you can't complain, okay? You are so privileged. I six say youth, you are so, so privileged. Like uh, today I want to break it down because, uh, uh, you know, when you're privileged, you seldomly know that you're privileged until the privileges are taken away from you. And then you're like, oh, wow, man, I had the good life, man, you know. Now my phone's gone, man. My life is a misery, right? It's because you were privileged. But uh, literally, I, uh, I think that's my favorite response when people ask me, how are you doing? You know, uh, uh, or I, you go, you know, break down into the long version of, you know, life is up and down and, and I have good and bad and, 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 and life is life. But you can't complain, all right? Because, uh, you know, I, I, I'm going to start it off with the clip that I thought maybe I wouldn't show, but I think... I will show because uh, this is uh, kind of breaking it down to the raw elements of what what l your life really is boiled down to. Go ahead, you can play the clip if you're ready. I am in prison for telling others about Jesus. I don't know why they didn't shoot me. The interrogations are the only time I am out of solitary. I am losing hope and fear I have been forgotten. I recite Bible verses to myself, but the words are getting harder and harder to remember. I can handle the torture, the starvation, but I desperately need my Bible. Every day I pray over and over for God to give me a Bible. Now I have my chance. The interrogations have ended and the guards trust me to go into the jungle to gather firewood. Working as fast as I can, I will collect two days worth of firewood. I'll bring one bundle back and leave the second bundle in the woods. This is what I need to do. It is very risky, but God is answering my prayer. I will risk everything to have a Bible. I don't want to leave my wife, but I have to or she will be in danger. Leaving her is so hard. God has answered my prayer. I have a Bible, but I must be careful. The 
I found my Bible, but I would not give up. I will bring in more Bibles. I will read God's Word every chance I get. Then the letters came. Letters from me. Letters from Christians all over the world. God not only answered my prayer for a Bible, He let me know I am not forgotten. แล้วก็สู้สู้สู้สู้สู้อืมแล้วก็ขอบคุณพระเจ้าขอบคุณอนาพี่น้องทั่วโลกที่อธิษฐานอ่อนวอนเพื่อโอ้แล้วก็มู
God wants to bring you to completion. And for that to happen, there is a process of things that happen in your lives that God brings us into completion. When I look at uh, the beginning of the church, and we see that, uh, you know, the Jesus uh, dies on the cross, and he, he, he comes for us, and he comes and tells us the truth, and pays for our sin, and, and starts the church. And not only that, you know, 50 uh, days later, the Holy Spirit falls. And the apostles are empowered to do the most impossible thing, and that's to go outside and, and preach the word of God. And uh, uh, this movement starts happening, and all this amazing things happen, right? But then towards the end of their life, you see a different picture. You see a lot of beatings, you know, that Apostle Paul had to go through. Uh, you see all the apostles get martyred to death. You see um, uh, John, who writes Revelations at at Patmos, they say that, uh, I, know, I, didn't, I didn't fact check this, but they say from Patmos you could see parts of Greece. And at night uh, when they were burning Christians, John was being able to see all this happen. Like all the ministry, all the things, all this, all this work that, that he was uh, 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 excited about doing, following God's spirit and moving across you know, uh, the, the different places of Europe and preaching the gospel. And he's seeing all this burn in his later years of his life as he's writing Revelations. And, and you see all this kind of uh, uh, the, the, the rawness of the Bible you know, I'm glad that the Bible isn't uh, Facebook. I'm glad that the Bible isn't Instagram. I'm glad it's not just a bunch of hype of, of perfection. It's the raw truth of reality. And when you break down what is the most important, you, you see it here. When you break down what's most important for you, you break down to the elemental things. What do you need every day? You need a handful of rice, you need some water, and you need Jesus, okay? That's it. Everything else is plus and minus. Everything else, you know, you're gifted by God to live this life. God always stays in control. He doesn't ever, ever, ever give you full control. He gives you a free will. He allows you to choose things in your life. But at the same time, he has a plan for you, and he wants you to bring it to completion. And uh, I, I wanted to preach some reality to you, but in, in a healthy dose, all right? Because, you know, we're so used to getting pumped up. We're so used to going to, you know, after a youth conference, we're excited. We're on full, you know, full mode. Like, man, God can do anything. This is awesome. We're like, let's start this ministry. Let's do this. Let's start just doing this. Let's go there. Let's go here. And, and, and it's great. That's a great, you know, uh, uh, when we're young, we have this uh, maximalistic ideology that we can do anything. And it's true. Like young people can do a lot. They, they, they. You know, they're they're faster. Their 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 endurance is you know incredible. Like I remember, I remember going on the hike uh, up Mount Sai, and uh, uh, it was uh, I think uh, Vasya Nifyodov's uh, uh, batch, not bachelor, but Chishnik. This is a celebration of, hey, we're about, you know, he's about to make this big step into marriage. And we decided all the guys would go up and, and hike up, up this mountain. And uh, I haven't been on a hike for a long time. And I'm, you know, I was like probably 32 at the time, 32. And we're going up this hike. And I have Dennis. And I think Noah went. And I think Roman went. And so, yeah, all the, you know, we're we're uh, hiking up this thing. And you know, we're, we're not complaining, OK? We're, we're going for it. But at the same time, this thing is steep. This thing is intense. And I, you know, I, I'm, I wasn't ready for this hike. But we get to this viewpoint, right? And it's, that's what it's all about. It's like, man, we get to this viewpoint. And I remember we got to do this. Uh, we were cooking up some hot dogs. And we had like some extra hot dog buns left over. And we were like feeding the birds. They were like up in the mountains. And they weren't, weren't like afraid of humans. Or they're used to eating in this spot for some reason. But they'd like come and take this stuff out of our hands. And we're like, this is awesome. And then somebody gets the clever idea and goes, hey, there's one more venture to the hike. It's called the haystack. I'm like, oh, yeah, and it's just like just bare uh, 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 cliff, you know, like no bushes, nothing. It's just like this stack of rock, and it's cold. You can't touch it, and you're like losing your balance. And we decided to go all the way up there for some reason, but, but 
you know, we're young, we're, we're, we got endurance, we're, we're ready to, to take, and I remember coming down the mountain, I'm like, man, I'm not going to feel my body for like a week, but I'm not going to tell anybody, you know, like, I'm, I'm not a weenie baby, I'm not going to cry about it, I'm not going to complain, and, and that's, that's what I'm talking about today. I want to read you a verse, we can open it up, it's in uh, Corinthians 13, hold on one second. First Corinthians 13, 12 and 13. And this is the NLT version. You guys can open up in your Bibles. If you want, you can put it up on the screen. Now we see things imperfectly, like puzzling reflections in a mirror. But then we will see everything with perfect clarity. All that I know now is partial and incomplete. But then I will know everything completely just as God knows me completely. Three things will last forever. Faith, hope, and love. And the greatest of these is love. I wanted to quickly uh, 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 throw a thought out there. Uh, faith, hope, and love. Pastor, our pastor preached a message a while ago, and that message still is like, like fresh in my head because it helped me so much in my Christian walk, in my, in my ability to, to follow Christ, the ability to, to get back up, the ability to pick up the cross. He's like, look, there's like three gears in life, all right? In your Christian walk, in, 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 it's like when you're in faith, when you're like God empowered uh, himself onto you, right? You just went through an awesome time in your prayer closet and you walk out to school that day or to work that day. You're just like, come on, bring it on world. Like I'm ready to take you. You're like a roaring lion, right? You got faith, right? You're you're ready to conquer the mountain. But then, you know, as uh, you're bombarded with life and reality and and, and temptations and, and problems and situations and not having enough of this or not, all of a sudden you're kind of just hopeful. You know what? I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make it through this day. I'm not going to complain. I can do this challenge, man. I'm not going to complain. Like, I'm going to be hopeful. I, 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 I can make it, right? And then more stuff comes down the pike. And by the end of the day, you're just going, you know what? Walk in love. Walk in love. Just don't hate them. Just don't kill them. Just like don't 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 cut that guy off. You know, just 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 forgive, you know, you know, just oh. and that's life. That's normal life. I always uh, say this, you know, it seems like for me it's two steps forward, one step back. Two steps forward, one step back. It says uh, be be fearful when you think you stand because you're going to fall. God always stays in control, and God always says, look, there's going to be a battle in your life for the rest of your life. Every day you're going to battle your flesh, and if you abide in me, you'll have victory. But if you think you got it, you'll fall. You'll fail because your flesh is strong. Your flesh is able to take you out like that. And if you abide in Christ, you have victory. If you, if you depend on his power, on his mercy, on his grace, on his will, you'll make it. But these three levels are there. You know, in ministry, you, you're going to experience these three levels. God's going to impart a word into your life. Maybe at this conference, God spoke something to you, and you're on fire. Like, man, I remember we were just having group, and I remember this story where I was telling my, my boys, hey, I remember going to a conference, and, you know, as you mature in your Christianity, you realize the conference isn't, you know, conference used to be about, you know, me breaking out in prayer and going out of the front and being slain in the spirit. And this, you know, I remember Louisiana, I remember all these things. I remember, you know, like going to a Benny Hinn conference and be like, yeah, this is awesome. And then as you mature as a Christian, many times you go to conference and you may not receive an emotional deposit of God's supernatural grace and abilities, right? And you're just like, well, you still gain from it. But it was like, man, maybe it's for the guy next to me or the girl next to me, but it wasn't quite for me. And I remember going to this conference, and we're sitting in the back. Me and Tanya, uh, I think we, uh, we had uh, our first baby, Avi, and we left uh, our child with our cousins, and we went to the conference. And because we went to our cousin's house, we had to talk to them, and it was great, but we're late. And so we're sitting in the back, like in the overflow, and we're just like, I'm just like, God, I'm here, you know, if you want to speak, speak, but I'm just like, you know, I'm just excited for the youth to be there. I'm excited that you guys are receiving, and I'm just praying, and 
just something comes over us. We both collapse. Uh, uh, and we, I receive in, in my heart a uh, clear word, you know, uh, full-time ministry. And, oh, man, I was excited. I'm excited. I'm like, yeah, this is awesome, God. And I remember coming back and sharing with Dima and sharing with Pastor and sharing, like, with, you know, people that are close to me that this is what I felt God was saying. But you know what? I'm, I'm not a full-time minister yet. Or maybe I am. But, <laughs> you know, I just don't have a title. But I realized, you know, that's what God wants me to go for. And, and I have the faith to do that. But, you know, when, when, when I realized, you know, God's going to have to bring that to proof. I accept whatever God says. I don't, I don't think it was some weird thing that happened. I, I believe it was from God's spirit. But, but right now, I'm in, I'm in the hope mode, right? Right now, I'm like, well, maybe one day in God's timing. Right? Maybe he'll call me to, to pastor a church somewhere. Or maybe I'll go tr- be a full-time ministry someday. Maybe you know, a ministry will unfold in my life where I will be a full-time minister. But right now, you know, I, I, I'm a part-time minister, and I'm okay with that. You know, I, well, I minister to, to, to my clients through my business. I minister to my family when I'm at home. I minister to, to, to some of you guys when I see you. Right? I, I, I think I'm... I, I, I do a lot of ministry, right? Maybe not a full time. I still take leisure. I still whatever. But, but I don't have a, you know, like an official ministry position except for, you know what? I, I, I love you guys, okay? Um, and, and, and that's, you know, uh, that, that's our life, right? Sometimes we look at, you know, oh, man, these guys are on fire. This church is growing. This youth is growing. This is happening. This is so awesome. This is so cool. We need to do exactly like it. No, you don't. You just need to be in completion mode with Christ. And what does that mean? God wants to complete you. He doesn't want to just elevate you. and You're the next shooting star where you're just like, look at me. I'm the best. And then... Because that happens all the time, again and again and again. Ministry after ministry, move after move, singer after singer, person after person, right? Because, you know, I believe that a lot of things that are anointed by God, people start to claim for themselves, and, and they don't have the, the character to manage those things. And that's what, for me, I'm personally afraid of position. I'm personally afraid of, of a, a, a place to be like, this is... This is, you know, I'm an evangelist. Why? Because there's so much responsibility behind it. I'm afraid to be a billionaire. Why? Because there's so much responsibility behind it. You know, go, go own a really fancy piece of clothing. There's a responsibility behind it. You can't, you know, if you get soy sauce from your sushi on it, you can be pretty upset. <laughs> but, it, you know, if you're eating in your pajamas, you know, you got soy sauce on it, it's like no big deal, right? There's, there's, there's a... There's a, there's a pressure, there's, a, there's, a, there's a, quite a bit of character that needs to happen. There's, there's a trust that needs to happen. Trust isn't, isn't just given. Trust is built. When you have a friendship, it takes years to really have a really good friend. And you know what? Your, your, uh, your friend doesn't even have to share all the same interests as you. But there has to be a trust. You know, I'm friends with a lot of people uh, because I can trust them. Well, mainly Christians because I think they're the most trustworthy people on the earth uh, because they are, they are uh, uh, being transformed in the likeness of Jesus Christ, which I, uh, we all uh, aspire to, right? And so, yeah, Christians still make mistakes. Yeah, Christians still, can still hurt you. Yeah, Christians can fail you. But, but, but I, I like building my friendships with fellow Christians. We don't have to have the same favorite color. We don't have to have the same flavor of food, uh, but we have, to, we have to have the same elements, break down the same elements. We've got to love God's word. We've got to love uh, being in the presence of God. We've got to love walking it out with, in, in God's will. You know, that's why I remember we were always excited because when we go on the mission trips, we realize, you know, one day God's going to send us to different places in the world, and we may never see you for a long, long time, but then one day we're going to intersect somewhere in the airport or in a country that we don't, we just, you know, thought we were praying about, but all of a sudden God sends us there, and then we'll be like, man, what's up, Dennis? Sorry. What's up, Dennis? How's life? What is God doing in, in you, right? And, and, and. You know, we, well, right now we're praying for this country and, and all the persecution. Well, what if the persecution comes here and then we have missionaries come here to, to minister to us? And, and you know, like, none, nothing is in our control. 
We're all in the process of being completed. And part of the process is endurance. In this, it says, uh, in Corinthians 13, uh, 13, it says, Just as God now knows me completely. Apostle Paul is writing this. You know, I, 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 that really uh, just, just hit me. God knows Apostle Paul completely. He's claiming that. God knows me completely. You know, I know this. God knows you completely. But he, many times, he knows exactly you're going to completely fail. And so he doesn't trust you with this and this and that. But Apostle Paul is saying, you know what? I've been through so many gauntlets. I've been through so many tests. I've been through so much stuff that I'm sold out. And God knows that. God, you want to test me again? Please. I'm ready. I'm ready to, to beat this thing. I'm ready to, to end my life for you. I'm ready to, to, to not just not complain, but I'm ready to die. Bring the test. Bring the final test. Come on, Jesus. Like, I'm ready to meet you. Because he sold out. He goes, God, you know what? This came to my life and I gave it up for you. You saw that. He sees that. He sees when you're in your prayer class and when you're not. He sees when you're, you're failing and when you're in victorious. He sees when you're clinging to him and when you're clinging to the world. And you know what? He wants to complete you. Yeah, we heard a message on, on a Sunday, right? God wants fellowship with you. God wants to interact with you. God wants to speak to you. But at the same time, God wants to complete your life. He, wants to, he has a plan for you and he wants you to complete it. He wants you to finish the race. And the race isn't just victory, victory, victory. The race is up, down, up, down, up, down. Test, pass, next test, maybe you're going to fail. Because you know what? You, you, you thought, man, I passed the test. I'm, I'm this guy. And she's just like, okay, let's see. Let's see how you do with this, with this one, right? Jesus, Jesus is in, uh, creating in you a character. Jesus is, is, is bringing you to completion. You know, you, you think you're ready for marriage? <laughs> let's, let's do the test, right? Let's, let's do the test, the character test, right? We just had this conversation with, you know, because everybody thinks, the world thinks, that, you know, I get something out of marriage. But God's designed marriage that you give in marriage. That's what marriage is. You give. You constantly give. And when you're tired of giving, you give again. Because if you don't, your marriage is over. That's a blessed marriage where you understand that, where two people can understand that and they can live it out like that. You know, we have uh, uh, people say, hey, I had a question. Can, can, can non-Christians have a successful marriage? On the outside, yeah, but on the inside, no. There's no trust. There's no trust in, in, in a fake marriage. There's a prenup, right? Usually if there's stuff happening uh, with rich people, right? Uh, people, many, many non-Christians have a facade. They live for the kids. They live for the tax breaks. They live for, you know, because we look good together or whatever. They live for, you know, we, in Russia, many, many people didn't get a divorce because it was just the culture wouldn't accept you. You'd be excommunicated if you got a divorce. And so people learned to, to, to put up with each other, but, but they didn't have successful marriages. Successful marriages are built on trust. Successful marriages are, are, are built on, 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 on two people sacrificing constantly. You know, and, and, and if you think you're going to get into marriage because, man, I just, I just got to have it. I want it, right? I'm ready. Do the, do the test. Why, why do you think you're ready? You know, there's, we talked about this before, but there's certain, certain things that you should have in line to, to check your heart, to, to, to guard your heart from, 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 from not only making the wrong, mis the wrong thing, but, but destroying somebody else's life, you know? Uh, anyways, I, I, I'm going to talk about, uh, you know, God's not playing games with you. When God gives you a, a, a process and a test, it's for your own good, right? James says, hey, have joy when you're going through the test, right? When you see a test, like, have joy. Like, be excited. God's entrusted you to deal with this. 
God's entrusted you to go through this. God's entrusted you to, to wrestle with this, to, to work this out, to, to fight this through. God's entrusted you to grow up. God's given you an opportunity to win. The reality of evil is here, right? The, just look outside your window. You know, you're going to see a lot of wacky things happening on this earth today, right? Because evil is just going wild. The last days, the love, love for people, love for God is just failing. And then, you know, everybody's like, hey, look at this issue. Look at this issue. Look at, look at the homeless issue. Oh, we just need a new governor. We just need a new president. We just need a new, a new system. No, you don't. You need a community. You need a, you need a, a love from people. You need a restoration from, from God. You can't throw money at it. You can't throw a system. You can't throw free housing at homeless people. They're just going to destroy those houses. And what next? More free houses? you you gotta, you got to break down their, 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 their pain. They're their, their people who have given up on life. They're, they have no faith. They have no hope. They have no love. How are you going to help them, Mr. President? You, you can't. Only he can only a, a fellow, fellow person with faith and love and hope can come and say, you know what, I have a solution. There's one way. And maybe you, you've kicked it to the curb. Maybe you don't believe, but maybe you hate Jesus. But that's the only way. That's the only thing that can lift you up out of this garbage pit. That's the only hope. That's the only way. That's the only truth. You know, I want to say to you today, God wants to trust you. Alex, God wants to trust you. He, he, his desire is to trust you. Emma, his desire. I saw you laughing. That's why I picked on you. Anybody else want to laugh? His desire is to trust you. He, he wants to trust you. He wants to, to see your life shape into his character. And he wants to go, man, Sam, I trust you. Sam. You know what? I, I waited so long for this process to finally come to completion in you. Now listen up. This is what I have. Bogdan, this is what I have for you. Bogdan, this is my plan. Listen to me clearly. This is what you're going to do. Kirill, this is what I have for you. I want you to trust me. I trust you. I see your struggle. I see, I see the, the craziness of, of living in this world as a human being and, and having a flesh. And I, 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 my whole Holy Spirit abides in you. I, I, my promises abide in you. And I see the struggle. I see the pain. I see the, the craziness that you go through, the gauntlet of everything. But you know what? I see victory in you. I, I'm calling you to, 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 to more, Max. I'm calling you to, to, to victory. I'm calling you to, to so I want to be able to trust you. I want, I want to give you something. More than you can imagine. That's what God is doing. He's bringing you to completion, into a, a, a process where he can fully trust you. You know, uh, heaven is a place where there's unity with God. It's complete trust. It's complete <laughs> in him. And that's, what we're, that's our heading, right? You know, we watch this video. I, I, I realize... That, that's the reality. It boils down to that. Can you swallow that reality in the heart of hearts? Can you be okay with that? Can you trust God like that? Because if you can't, at one point, you're just, you're, you're, it's just, you know, that, that's, that, that's deep. We're surface level. We're, we're, we're privileged. But what if that privilege is gone? What if reality hits? What if the test actually gets like a real test? God wants to trust you. You know, God's not gonna, God's not gonna say, hey, you, 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 didn't, you didn't become a pastor, you didn't become an evangelist, you didn't become uh, this. You know, Corinthians 13 talks about, uh, you know, you, you didn't, you didn't you, even if you, even if you gave up everything, even if you put your body to, to, to flames, even if you did this and this, even if you did this and this, but you don't have love, you know, you, you, many people think that by doing this, they can guarantee themselves into heaven. No, it's every part of you 
has to be broken down in God's plan, in God's trust. You know, at a drop of a hat, you got to be willing to go, yes, sir, Lord. You know, I, I'm going to give up my, my house. I'm going to give up my, my, uh, my status as a citizen of America. I'm going to give up my, my job, my career. I'm going to give up my, my family if, if, if God calls me to. That's, that's a pretty crazy thought, right? I, when, when I had a, a deep uh, clarity from God about getting married, the vision that I had was me on a cross and my wife telling me, complete the mission, die. I saw Tanya with a couple kids and Tanya saying, be faithful to God, die. And that's how I knew I was going to marry this, 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 this woman. Because she understood God's purpose in a deep way. She understood God's plan in a deep way. God gave me somebody to help me complete the mission. Do you know why? Because I realized in that moment, in that vision, God was in control. God was going to take care of her. God's going to take care of her. It wasn't me. It's not my paycheck. It's not my effort. It's not, yeah, okay, God gave all that to me. But if I die, if I'm out of the picture, Zeke will be okay. Avi will be okay. Anshka will be okay. Tanya will be okay because God is in control. We are getting on a plane to go to Cairo, Egypt. And I think a couple days before this, there is uh, 21 Coptic Christians put out on a beach. They're captured in, in, in Egypt, put out on a beach in, I think, Syria. Libya, Libya. Libya. And this goes nationwide, but goes viral. 21 young males beheaded publicly set around the world. And here we are buying plane tickets to go to Egypt to go visit the, the church, right? And, and, you know, I remember the, the craziness that was going on in my life. We, I just got married. We, I think we got, were pregnant or we had Avi. I'm not, I think we were just pregnant. Maybe we had, no, we had, we're obviously already born. And my family starts going, uh, my in-laws start calling me like, Andre, I heard you're going to Egypt. What are you, crazy? Like, people are getting their head chopped off, right? You know, like, I have people at work going, you're going where? I just saw the video. Like, you, you're a Christian going to Egypt. You're going to get your head chopped off. Like, what's wrong with you? But in my heart of hearts, that, that, that the part, impartation of the Holy Spirit and that faith that, you know, it doesn't make any sense. It says, go, go, go to Egypt. Right? And you're just like, man, do I trust God or I just do what, what, I, what, you know, what, I, what I feel is right? right? And, and moments like that in your life that define you and define you and define you and define you and define you until you're complete, until God has more. God's going to open up more. You know, you could, you could just be a prayer warrior in your old age where you're just so in, in tune with what God, is, what God is saying. Maybe you don't even have him. Maybe nobody knows about you. But when you open your mouth, things in this world shake. And everybody only finds out what really, what, really, uh, what kind of impact your life had when they get to heaven. It doesn't matter. Your, your ministry doesn't define your faithfulness. You're, you, you can have a great big ministry and go to hell, the, the, according to the Bible. But, but the trust and obedience and, 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 and unity with God is what defines you, is, what, you're, is what, what makes you valuable, right? And all the things that, that we are constantly promoted and advertised to, to, to bring us value, our, our house, our cars, our clothes, our status, our friends, all, none of that has value. What has value is, man, when you're in prison, who cares about your, your Facebook when you're in prison, who cares about your, your bank account? When you're in prison, who you, know what, you, know, you know what you care about? The Word of God. You know what you care about? Having that sweet fellowship with, with the Holy Spirit. Hearing from, from God that, man, good job. Faithful. I trust you. Many people are martyred to death. Many people are, are go to the grave. And those are true Christians. Those are victorious. Those, those are the ones that inherit everlasting life. Those are the ones that, man, when Jesus is, is it's like, man, I, I trust you. Come in. Come in. My trusted, my completed one. And to your death, you followed me. 
Let's pray. Noah, if we could uh, uh, sing the second song. Um, I don't know if you want to bring everybody up. Uh, you can just, uh, the second song, the new song we played. There was a, a line in there uh, of completion, and it, it, it stood out to me. I, I would like you, if we could, sing that song in a few minutes. Holy Spirit, we are so privileged to, to have you in our lives. We definitely, a million times over, don't deserve you. We so many times just are too lazy to even say hello. We're just don't want to. And in, our, in the depth of us, we have this, sometimes even just rebellion. We know what's true, but, but we don't have the strength to, to just say hello yet alone praise you and give you gratitude for everything that you're doing, for this gift of life that we have, for this privilege that we have. Holy Spirit, we, we ask you to just again for, forgive us, again just to overlook our weakness, to overlook our pride, to overlook our, our failures, to overlook who we really are. And we again ask you to, to ignite in us this process this process of following you, this process of, of faithfulness, this process of, of endurance, this process of picking up our cross. And maybe we'll pray this prayer another thousand times. But God, just like King David said, do anything you want in our life, but don't take your spirit from us. Do anything you want in our life, but, but don't stop this process. Don't stop this process of salvation in our lives. Don't stop this process of, of, of victory in our lives. Holy Spirit, we, we, we want to have fellowship with you. We, we, we want to we wanna be your trusted ones. We want to be the ones that, that you call on when you need us. Wherever, at any time, at any given moment, God, we want to we wanna be able to respond fully with all of our hearts, with all of our souls, with all of our minds. God, I... Jesus, I, I just ask you to, 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 to move, 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 move in our youth, move in our church, move in our culture, move in our society, move in our inf circle of influence, God, move, move in us, move in us, break us out, break us out, God, break us out, break us out of our, of our, of our stagnant routines. God, we need you, we need you, we need you, we need you, Jesus. We need you, Lord. Holy Spirit, we need you. We want you. We want you. 